G'day guys, Ryan here, your Chief Espresso Officer, and today we're gonna to be looking at cheap versus expensive, and specifically, cheap grinders used on expensive machines and expensive grinders used on cheap machines, and which one turns out to make the best coffee. Have a guess at the comment sections below and tell me what you think might actually make the better coffee, the more expensive machine or the more expensive grinder. But otherwise, stick around, we're gonna test them both out and see what the results are. Let's get into it. So I see this happen a lot of the time where someone walks into a shop and buys a $3,000 coffee machine and forgets to buy a grinder because maybe the salesperson doesn't really understand the value of the grinder. Now, over the years, my experiments have all come with the same conclusion that the grinder is actually the most important accessory that you need to buy for your machine. So it doesn't even matter what machine you have, if you don't buy a grinder, you can't make really high quality coffee. I went out and bought the cheapest grinder I could find. It's $40 from the supermarket. It has flat burr grinders. I can't really tell if they're ceramic or plastic. They might be ceramic. But anyway, they're flat burrs, which, you know, I always say go out and get yourself some burr. Don't buy an onion chopper or a blade grinder. Make sure that they're flat burrs or conical burrs. So, yeah, I guess you could say, well, ride, I did what you advised and I went out and bought myself a grinder. Fair enough. Let's test how good this $40 grinder will go on my Senesso, which is a $30,000 machine. And so that you know, the Senesso is a fantastic machine. Not only is it beautiful, but it also is quite intelligent and it can fix most of the mistakes that any baristas make when they're making coffees on it. So let's see if it can fix a $40 grind size and see what the results are. Okay, so you need a point of reference before we show you what this grinder can actually do. And I'm gonna show you how good this machine is at fixing any mistakes. We're gonna run a shot and I'm not gonna tamp it at all. I might level it out, I might just distribute it in the thing, but I'm not actually gonna press it down. I'm just gonna shove it into the machine and see what the pour is on that shot. Okay, so you can see it's just piled on there. I haven't done anything yet. I'm not going to tamp it. My natural instinct is to pick up the tamper as soon as I've done this, but I'm just gonna flatten it. Okay, that's it. Now, I'm gonna just push it in. It's gonna make a mess, but we're gonna see how good the pour out, the extraction is. I mean, it's a little bit fast, but I mean, that looks pretty amazing. Like it's not blowing out everywhere. Most people's expectations would be that it just gushes all out the sides. So that is done on a Mythos grinder, about $3,000 or 2,500, and without tamping, like the machine tamped. Let's look at this lovely grinder that we got here for 40 bucks. It's lovely, it's got no branding on it, so who knows who made it. I think the supermarket made it themselves in their back area because it looks like it's been put together by a child. So this, it's got about eight settings for different coarseness with just some simple instructions. Coarse, medium, fine. So interestingly, you have to spin it and spin it and spin it to get the hopper off. We're gonna make it as fine as possible, which is there. So on the finest setting, because we don't know what setting it's gonna be like, it only goes straight into this hopper, so it doesn't even have a space to put it into the basket. Won't turn on even if I tried, so it actually has to be in there. That sound good? trying to twist to actually make it more coarse. So let's have a look at that. It's grinding. It's definitely grinding. It's not the finest. It's very, very coarse. I mean, it is fine, but it's not, um, I don't think it's gonna be fine enough to go through the machine. Let's see if that's enough. Let's weigh this so we know exactly sort of the parameters that we need to deal with. We're looking for 22 and a half grams here, so pop that in. There's 22.3, four, five, cool. Now I'm gonna tamp it down nice and firmly. Tamp it down, give it a really good tamp. Look, there's lots of bits of husk in there. Uh, that means it's not actually properly grinding, it's sort of chipping the beans. So yeah, it's immediately just gushing out the sides. It's running more like water. Ah, oh, and it's finished. In 12 seconds, we got the entire amount of water through the grinds and into the cup, instead of 
three times that, or two times that even. You can see it's quite white, quite light. There is creme on there, but you can tell from the way that it poured just how coarse it was, how uneven it was. Now try it. It's very sour. I mean, it's like literally unripe apricots. I mean, it's drinkable, you could drink it. Obviously, compared to just a no tamp, and this is a precision tamper by Pullman. Shout out to the, my guys in South Australia. Brilliant company. However, not even that could save it from a cheap grinder. Not even a $30,000 machine could save the coffee. Not even amazing, high quality, specialty coffee beans could save it. All because the grinder was not doing its job. Now, let's have a look at the opposite way around and we'll get the EK43 and we'll run it through my little cheap Audi machine and we'll see what the difference is there. All right, round two. We're going to pit the $300 Audi machine against a $5,000 grinder. So this is a commercial spice grinder called the EK43 by a beautiful company from Germany called Mount Koenig, which are really known for their precision grinders. This never was intentionally made as an espresso grinder, but it was actually made as a spice grinder. However, because of the design, the setup, the blades run vertically, and the motor in it is so powerful, the blades are 98 mil, that it just consistently gets the best espresso grind. So if anything you would wanna use on a cheap machine, obviously this is overkill for any kitchen, but to make the point, we wanna see how a massive grinder can fix the problems that a little machine has. So let's get in there. 22 and a half, that's our dosage today. We're using some Il Caramello beans. Nackies. You can see from here, the grind is actually super consistent. There's not like big chunks of it like in the other one where it was very inconsistent. This is all very fine, but still just a little bit of that grit. So it's not flour, but it's also not chunks of salt sized grind. So we know that's really consistent coming out of the EK. So how does that then show up when we try to run it through the little outing machine? So this machine has had no puck preparation, which means we haven't made the puck nicer and softer. It's straight out of the grinder, straight into the group head. And look at that flow. That is a consistent, even flow. The pressure is dropping a little bit, just the machine's having a little hard time holding that pressure as soon as the puck opens up, but you're still getting a lovely shot out of that. I can stop it now. Just have a look at this. Slight variations, obviously, but if you can see that there, yeah, yeah. You can see where we let it run a little bit. As the puck opened up, the coffee ran through a little bit more quickly. And if we have a look at the puck now, there's a bit of pressure to build up in there. Ooh. We blew it out. Not an ideal situation. So we can quite clearly see how important the grinder actually is to making your home espresso machine. And I would always spend more money on a grinder than on your machine because of that exact reason. However, I know it's very hard to go out and buy a $300 machine and then invest in a $5,000 grinder. So keep it in relation to whatever machine you have. This is the most basic grinder, entry level grinder that I would recommend, the Breville Smart Grinder Pro because it's about $200 Australian. It does the trick. It's not a fantastic grinder. It certainly isn't the most consistent but, and it's very slow, but it'll get you started. So the very minimum I expect to see you purchasing is a $200 grinder. And if you have a $300 machine, then that should suit it perfectly. So there you go. There is the exact reason why you need to buy a grinder and not just any grinder as we now established. You need to invest a certain amount of money into your grinder. So even if you have only $1,000 total budget for your machine and grinder, you're better off 
buying a cheap machine and investing the rest of it into a grinder. Because if you take care of it, you look after it, you clean it out regularly and you don't over grind things, you don't leave the motor running when it doesn't have any beans in there to grind, then these grinders will actually probably last you 30 plus years. And so therein lies your investment. You're gonna get way more out of that than you will out of any other machine. So thanks for watching the video. Hope you stick around for our other videos that are coming up. If you've liked what you see, you can jump on my website, coffeebeansdelivered.com.au. Links are just down below, and you can buy their fantastic tasting coffee beans. We have a whole range of blends and single origins, and we ship all around the world. And if you wanna learn more about how to make that ultimate coffee at your home, there's a bunch of different lessons, courses that deep dive into every aspect of making coffee so that you can stop mucking around at home, trialing different things, working out, spending money, trying to make the best coffee at your house. You can get all the shortcuts, all the pro hacks, all the tips to make it first time round and it will save you a lot of money. So check it out. I'm Ryde, your Chief Espresso Officer and enjoy your brew.